it's been one of those New Year's Eve things where you say, well, "What are you going to? What's your resolution for this year?" And I would always put, "I want to go off and see the Northern Lights." And I'm an artist, and I always take my paints with me wherever I go. And it just became a natural progression. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be there. I wanted to paint. Um, never in really occurred to me that it could end up being a, a valid avenue of research. We've been struggling with the idea of practice-based research because all the, all the people who advise and are knowledgeable about these things say the practice will ask the questions. You just do it and the, the research will present itself through the practice. One of the one nights in particular, all of the apps and all of the data and all the internet stuff said no, nothing, nothing, nothing. And then this little man with his beard, he looks like a gnome, comes and he says, come on, we says, we're going to see the lights. And they go, what do you mean? He says, come on, and so, so where are we going? And, and he said, we're going on the boat. And off we chuffed into the Arctic Ocean in the middle of the night, get out of the boat, walking through, the snow goes up to your hip, and there's this little shack. We're sitting there chatting away, and I'm sitting there going, okay, so here I am in a Nazi bunker in the middle of the Arctic Ocean, in the dark, and it's, there's nothing going on. And then they said, okay, let's go. So they set up the cameras, put it all down, everything's set up, and I'm going, okay. And then so it's almost as if he clicked his fingers, and then suddenly, boom, everything lit up. In a way, the sort of things that I've I'm doing now with my research are, are, are based upon that. It's the whole idea of how we need to stop thinking of ourselves as this observer of the world that we live in. We are the world that we live in. So I, I liken this to a bit of a pre-production in my, in my research where I can go out and go onto the field and ask myself some questions in a medium that I feel comfortable with. And I've always been comfortable with watercolours. Well, my first experience with just pure abstract nonsense, I think, my artwork adapted to the point where I was able to get something which communicated the way I feel about what I wanted to do. But there was that process of, of adaptation and, and, and feedback. Everything around you is participating in the creative experience and then you are trying to create something which in itself is, is part of that same environment. It's not easy. You ask anyone who's ever tried to do painting before, it is, um, it's, it's a process and it is, my personal opinion, it, it is painful. But if you ever go and you see a woman who's given birth, they'll always be delighted. They'll always think it's the most beautiful experience of my life. And the joy and the rapture and everything, and it's the most memorable thing that I've ever done. There isn't a single thing I've ever created that I don't have that same euphoric association with when I look at it, and I think that's my baby. I've been dabbling around with spherical video and stuff like that, and I thought, well, that'd be an interesting idea to just take a friend along. So I devised a system where I can project the world and the experiences that I was having in those difficult situations and then relive them. Virtual reality is supposed to give you your, your 3D models and the like inside there, but there's this calibration mode and I kind of combined the two worlds together so I could see myself here in this room and project simultaneously the world that I inhabited in a different time, in a different place, in a different experience. And I made myself this sort of mental promise that I'm not going to take the VR off until I'm finished and totally satisfied and that's the end of the painting. Uh, when I took it off, I looked at it and I, this, this part of my stomach just came out and said, who did that? <laughs> that's not mine. I don't know this. And it, it's, not my, it's not my baby. I don't want it. And, and, and I'm still searching about that and thinking about that whole sense of belonging in the world. Like I reflect back to these fishermen they knew the lights were coming. They were part of their world. And then when it came, they were all very much part of that. And here I am creating something in a world that I can remove and I'm no longer part of that world and I feel disconnected from that. There is definitely and necessarily a coupling between the person and the environment, like the, with the Norwegians, they're definitely coupled, they're connected with it. What I've done is I've created this like a bit of a Frankenstein where I, I've broken that promise. It's asking questions about 
the, the way we perceive things and the way we relate to things when we perceive them. And there's actually, there's a big word that I will use that, that I am um, kind of slapping on all of my research. It's, it's a Norwegian word it's called ken, kenskap. And kenskap is the word which I think encapsulates everything I've said today. It doesn't mean knowledge. It means the knowledge that you get from being in the world. This guys who knew that the lights were coming, they, he was Ken Scapp.